Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to talk about a very important property, which is called uh, one deviation property. Uh, we use it uh, to check whether a strategy profile is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or not. So it's a very, very useful tool. Well, the thing is, obviously, backward induction is uh, the simplest uh, tool to check whether a strategy uh, profile or the outcome is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or not. But the thing is, with uh, backward induction, you cannot use it in every game because you know sometimes the game can be very complicated. Uh, later, we're going to talk about um, uh, such examples where there are infinitely many sub-games or maybe the horizon of the game is very long, so it doesn't end in two steps, but it, it continues like, I don't know, 110 steps. Um, so <clears throat> that means the backward induction is going to be very, very cumbersome. And so uh, a simpler way of checking whether a strategy profile is an SPNE or not uh, is, is, is going to be very, very useful uh, tool in your tool set. Okay, so I'm, I am going to start with some sort of uh, definitions and then I am going to define what we mean by one deviation property. It's, it's actually a result, I'm sorry. So, uh, so here's the first uh, sort of uh, uh, note. Well, for a given decision note X, a player's continuation value. So this is the first concept that I would like to teach. Uh, a player's continuation value is the payoff that this player will eventually get contingent on the path of play passing through the node X, all right? Well, for any strategy profile, we can calculate the continuation value associated with this strategy profile, all right? So continuation value is associated, is, is dependent on strategy profile and then the decision node that we are particularly picking. Well, if you want to calculate the continuation value uh, for, for, uh, for, for a given strategy profile, what are you supposed to do? Well, first pick a decision node, a particular decision node, and then construct the path that the strategy profile S implies. And then you basically reach to the, uh, the payoff. And so the continuation value is going to be that payoff. Well, so uh, let's give an example, all right? So here I have a game between two players. Player one moves first. Uh, he can finish the game or continue. And then the, if, if he finished the game, well, then the payoffs each player is going to get is 10-10. If he continues, player two has the option of finishing the game and continue. If he finishes the game, uh, we're going to take $10 or 10 units of payoff from player one and double it and give it to player two. If, however, player two continues, what happens is that, uh, uh, so player one is going to move again, he can finish the game, and again, the same thing, we, we take 10 units of payoff from player two and give, uh, double it and give it to player one, and so on, all right? At the end of the game, player one can either continue in which game the game will over with zero, zero payoff, or he can just choose uh, uh, finish with 30-30 payoff. So the question is, what is the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game? But, uh, well, let's, let's find it actually. Um, so here it's simple. Let's use the backward induction. Uh, in, 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 in this part of the game, player one is going to choose F because obviously 30 is higher than zero. So F is the optimal strategy. So move a step further. Uh, player two here is going to choose F because 40 is higher than, than 30 because she knows that player one is going to choose F. So therefore, player two will also choose F. Well, here in this decision note, player one, if he chooses F, he's going to end up 20. But if he chooses C, he knows that his opponent is going to go for F. And so he's going to get 10. Hence, he's going to choose F. Now, player two, he knows that, or she knows that if she chooses F, she's going to end up 30. But if she chooses continue, her opponent is going to end the game. And so she, she's going to end up 20. So therefore, she prefers 30. So that means she's going to finish the game. And here, in the initial decision note, player one knows that if, she, if he finishes the game, he's going to get 10. If he continues, his opponent is going to finish the game anyway, and so player one is going to end up zero, so therefore he prefers to finish himself. So what does that mean? We have all the arrows here, uh, which basically means the game 
at the beginning is going to finish and uh, you know we will never reach to those sub games all right but nevertheless remember the strategy the concept of strategy is uh, uh, what the players will do at every decision note uh, he or she may have even though those decision notes will never be reached well here how can I write the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile? Well, as follows. So this is my S, uh, my strategy profile. So the first player, comma, second player. So how many decision notes are there for player one? Well, he has one, two, uh, three decision notes. Remember, strategy is one action for each decision note. So therefore, a strategy for player one is going to be triplets. So here, obviously, in order to specify SP&E, you have to tell me the actions or, or the branches that have arrows on it. So therefore, the optimal strategy here is F here, the optimal strategy again F, and here also the optimal strategy F. So therefore, F, 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 meaning uh, at any decision note, player one, choose F. And then what about player two? Player two has one, two. So let's circle them. Two decision notes. So therefore, her strategy should be uh, uh, tuples, right? One action for each decision note. Uh, and obviously, I'm writing SP and E's. So that means at every decision note, write down the optimal action at that decision note, which are F. So therefore, FF is going to be. So this is a strategy profile. Uh, so let me just make it a bit more comp compact. So what does that mean? That means, you know, both players are going to play F, the, the finish, uh, whenever, uh, whenever uh, they, they make a decision. All right. So if you look at this game, all right. So what is the con continuation Continue. So let's um uh, let's do the following. Let's name these decision notes. All right, because uh, uh, the, remember the continuation value depends not only on the strategy profile but also on the decision note. All right. So here I'm going to call this decision note uh, A. Um, uh, yeah, B, C, D, and E. All right. So there are four, five decision notes. So continuation uh, value of player one at decision node A, according to strategy profile S, ACC means according to uh, strategy profile S, is what? Well, it's 10, right? So according to this strategy profile, uh, player one's uh, payoff uh, at this decision, a continuation value, I'm sorry, is, is just 10. Uh, what about continuation value for player 2? It's also 10. Well, the game will be over. But let's calculate. So we can calculate the following. What is the continuation value of the players, both player 1 and 2 players, at decision node uh, C, according to strategy profile S. Huh. Well, remember this decision note C will never be reached, but who cares? We are calculating continuation value. Continuation value says nothing about when the game is going to be over. It just says, uh, well, pick a decision note, which is C here. I am sorry, this C may confuse you with the uh, actions C. Uh, so I apologize for this. So if you like, let's give a different name. A, B, um, uh, Z, let's say. All right. So therefore, uh, I am calculating the continuation value of the players at decision node Z, according to the strategy profile S. So pick a decision node, which I did, Z. Uh, from this moment on, what... Uh, just drove the path of this game, drove the path with respect to the strategy profile, meaning uh, where are they going? What payoff are these players going to end up if they play according to the remaining of this strategy profile? So here, uh, this is this, uh, the, the decision note, and this is the strategy profile, all right? Play F always. So that means 
if this is this is the decision note meaning if they somehow reach to this decision note i mean they can reach to that only if player one and two sort of make a mistake or they, they deviate well then according to the strategy profile player one is going to play f in which case the payoffs is going to be 20 20 for both players all right so the continuation value uh, at this decision note for these players according to this strategy profile is 20 20. well what about the continuation value of the players according to this strategy profile at this decision note? Well, it's 1040. What about here? It's 3030. All right, so you got the idea. So now let me choose a different strategy, which is not SPNE because we just uh, found the SPNE. It's, uh, you know, play F forever. And here is the strategy, let's say uh, CCF, comma, CC. Okay. It's just a strategy profile. Is it, oh, sorry. Is it uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? No. All right, so what is the continuation, continuation value at decision note B for players uh, according to the strategy profile S? Hmm, well, so we pick the decision note B all right, so here, according to this strategy profile, now I need to uh, determine the path. How are they going to play? So let's erase those reds because this is not the path. So here, the path is the following. So at the second decision note, so this is the, uh, I'm sorry, at the second decision note, which belongs to uh, player two, and it is her first decision note, she's going to play C. Well, actually, let's start from the beginning, right? Because that's easier. Player one is going to play C and then player two is going to play C and then player one is going to play C and then player uh, two is going to play C and then player one is going to F. All right. So therefore, if you just uh, drove the path of this game, according to this strategy profile, that's going to be the path. So they're going to continue, 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 continue. Oops. Uh, the player one uh, ends the game at the final round. All right, so that's the path. So now, however, I would like to calculate what the continuation value for the players will be at this decision note. Well, if you continue according to the strategy profile, if the game is here, well, they are going to continue, continue, end up at here. So therefore, the continuation value is 30, 30. Well, what about the continuation value for these players at the, at the decision notes uh, Z or D? Still the same, 30-30. So here you see the continuation values uh, with respect to this strategy profile is different than the continuation values uh, for the strategy of the previous strategy profile, which was the SPNE, are different. So continuation payoffs can be different uh, for different strategy profiles and at different decision notes. So be careful about it. All right. So hoping that the concept of continuation value is clear. Now I would like to relate the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium with continuation value. Well, here, if you want to check subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, what you have to do for every player I and every subgame, you fix the other player's strategy and then you ask the following question is there a strategy of player i si prime that yields a strictly higher payoff for player i than does si in the sub game so what does that mean that means if you want to check whether this is a, a, a sub game perfect nash equilibrium strategy profile or not what you have to do forget about the last uh, round for any round right the sub game perfect nash equilibrium establishes Nash equilibrium at every sub game, remember? So you pick a, a, a decision note, and so sub game basically, and then look at the continuation value according to this strategy profile and say, look, is player two's strategy best response to player one strategy in this sub game? So here, what are the payoffs I'm going to compare? I'm going to compare the continuation values, 
All right? So pick another uh, uh, decision note, meaning another subgame, and then this subgame starts with player one. And so we have to ask the question, is player one best responding player two in this subgame? And of course, you also have to ask, is player two best? So each player must be best responding each, uh, the, the, his, his or her opponents, because that's what Nash is. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means here is the result. Uh, one deviation property. Uh, well, it says consider any finite extensive form game. All right, so that's true for finite extensive form game. If it is an infinite game, uh, we will hopefully talk about it. Uh, but a similar version of this uh, result will be true. Uh, but there we have to make some assumptions about the payoff structure. So this is for finite extensive form games. Perfect information, imperfect information, doesn't matter. A strategy profile, S star, is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. If and only if, so it's a very strong statement, for each player I and for each subgame, no single deviation would raise player I's payoff in that subgame. All right? So, all right, well, what does that mean? That, that means the following. So here, let's consider, uh, so that's the strategy. I know it's not subgame perfect Nash, but look, this is the strategy, right? Uh, I just put them as an arrow. So here, according to this strategy, uh, let's, for example, consider this subgame, all right? So in this subgame, player two is going to play continue here and then continue here, and then player one is going to choose continue here and then finish here. Well, the question is, is this an optimal strategy? Is this, I mean, are these strategies forming Nash equilibrium in this subgame? Uh, well, so here, let's fix player one, uh, one's strategy, which is uh, CF, all right? So the question is, is for player two, what is his, uh, her strategy? It's CC. Is CC best response to uh, CF, of player one. All right, that's the question that we should ask. Also, is CF best response to CC of player two? Right? Uh, if any one of those uh, answers is no, well, then that means those strategies are not forming Nash equilibrium, and hence the strategy for this strategy profile cannot be uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But here's the thing. So is CC best response to CF? What does that mean? That means player one is playing uh, C here. All right, so let me put a bigger black arrow. You'll see why I'm doing this. And then F here. So now I want to say, is CC best response to this? Hmm. So if he plays CC, player two's payoff is going to be 30. Uh, if he plays, uh, for example, F, uh, right, instead of CC, so F something, uh, his payoff will be 30. Hmm. If he plays, so as you see, there are like many possible deviations for player two, right? He can, he can choose C here and, and F here. He can choose F here and then F here. He can choose F here and C here. You see what I mean? I mean, in this simple game, there are like four possible deviations, but if there were like infinitely many available actions, imagine, there would be like infinitely many possible strategies you have to compare. And because we are checking subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, you have to do it every subgame. So imagine every subgame, you have to compare one strategy with infinitely many other strategies and see if it is a best response. So that might be a daunting task to do in a complicated uh, uh, sort of games. Well, instead, one deviation property says the following. Look, uh, in a Nash equilibrium, we're fixing player one's strategy, right? C, F. Good. Also fixed player two's strategy uh, here, because this is what she is going to play later. So then only compare these two possible deviations, all right? Is it C that is going to benefit you or is it F that will benefit you? Well, if you play C, I know that according to those arrows, I'm going to get 30. If it is F, I know that I'm going to get 30. So player two is actually best responding by C. 
all right? That's it. That's all you have to do. Do the same thing, obviously, for player one. What does that mean? That means fix the second player's strategy to CC, all right? So this time I put the arrows to C and C here. And then remember player one can deviate to anything. So player one can deviate to F here or he can deviate to C here, right? So there's a bunch of potentials, but what one deviation property says, you know what, don't worry about player one's strategy here, fix it as well as F. So then only worry about whether playing C here is more profitable or playing F is more profitable. Well, let's see. If he plays C, all right? Uh, I mean, by the way, where are we? We are right here. So player two is already playing C. So if he plays C, what's gonna happen if you follow the arrows, uh, the player one is gonna get 30 payoff. If he plays F, however, remember we are here, his continuation payoff is going to be 20. Huh. So you know what? The deviation to F is not a profitable deviation. And hence, he's also best responding. Huh. Does that mean that we are actually getting subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? No, no, no. Don't forget. In order to have a subgame perfect Nash, you have to do this exercise at every subgame and for every players. So here, the, you know, this, this checking best responding did not fail, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to fail uh, somewhere. It will actually fail at some point, all right? But you get the idea, hopefully. What it says, one deviation property, you do not have to worry about uh, comparing one strategy with millions of other strategies. So you fix your opponent's strategy, you fix your continuation strategies, meaning your strategies for the rest of the game. All you have to do, what is the optimal thing for you to do at your decision note. All right, so that's that's the critical thing. So, uh, well, why this is a true, I mean, why one deviation property is actually giving us SPNE, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The reason is simple. Well, because you have to do it every uh, subgame, it basically means the following, look, Remember, I am fixing my strategies here as a player one, for example, and see whether I prefer to play C or F only. So I, for example, do not worry about maybe CC here is, is, is going to be profitable or maybe FC is going to be. So you see what I mean? So here, uh, the idea is that, well, because you are doing this exercise, you know, this best responding one shot deviation property exercise, in every sub game, that means you will be choosing an optimal strategy here anyway. All right. So therefore, given that you're doing something optimal here, here the deviation is going to be like, uh, you know, if you deviate to C, you know that the remaining outcome, the continuation value is the best you can do given your opponent's strategy. And here the deviation is going to give you uh, uh, sort of uh, the best you can do if you deviate it this way, all right? So therefore, uh, you will always comparing, yes, you are comparing only one deviation here. You do not look at the deviations in this part, but because you're doing this exercise in every sub game, that actually means the deviation here is the best deviation you have. Deviation, you know, uh, deviation here is also best deviation you have. All right, so for that reason, uh, one deviation property and sub game perfect Nash equilibrium idea are equivalent. Like backward induction and uh, sub game perfect Nash equilibrium idea were equivalent. So the bottom line is, there are two ways to find SPNE. One, backward induction. Two, use the one deviation property. Well, which one is easier? To be honest, backward induction is the easiest. But again, you cannot use it in every game. You'll see there's going to be complicated games where you can't apply the backward induction because they're uh, you know, too much subgames or their infinite horizon. And so in those instances, applying one deviation property is going to be an easier way of finding subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Okay, I hope that was clear.